me head. LL Cool J, believe me, at one time he was that ninja. LL does mean ladies love Cool J. Craig Mack is his song, so he had to be there. Uh, who else was on there? Buster Rhymes, you know. Now we got some issues coming out about him. Uh, okay, I'm going to just leave that there and walk away. I don't hear nobody out there. Hold down. Hold down. Sure enough, pretty quickly, they started bringing in some possible DJs to interview. There were a few I knew from MTV and other places, but no one seemed official. Just before Steve started in the spring of 1992, they brought in Funk Master Flex. The first thing I remember thinking about Flex was, he's good. He's a real hip hop DJ. And when they announced that they were hiring him, I knew this was starting to get real. This was the first step in creating the first ever hip hop station. And I couldn't believe how lucky I was to be in the middle of it all. Though by no means did it happen overnight. Slowly but surely, it became apparent that the decision to bring Flex to Hot 97 had been the right move at the right time. People were tuning in. People were talking about Hot and believing that Steve Smith was on to something. But there was also tremendous pushback. While Steve battled for a transition into full-time hip-hop, there were still major remnants of what Hot once was, and people fighting to keep it what it once was. Freddie Colon. Freddie Colon, a heavy set New Yorkian who'd been in radio for years and was a nighttime on air personality at the time, made no apologies for saying, This is the worst thing this company has ever done. Hip hop is a fad. Hip hop wasn't an easy bet. That's part of what makes it real. So even as we started to see that it was more than a fad and Flex was proving that now that he was on the air regularly, there was still an atmosphere of not knowing what was going to happen next. As I'd gotten pretty good at running the boards and I had been assigned to Flex's show, I lived that history. And there I was every night standing next to Flex, running the boards, excited as shiz. You have to understand that before this, the programming had been freestyle and dance music all day and night on Hot 97. Up until Flex started to move the needle, we had zero hip hop credibility. So, okay, now I see why Funkmaster Flex is so respected in the industry, because to be quite honest, I didn't know the nigga. I didn't know that he had that much credibility. I didn't know the nigga's credentials. I didn't know. If you wanted hip hop, it was public service radio or WBLS and KISS FM on Friday and Saturday nights. But here we were changing the game. Not only was I feeling it, but so were a lot of hip hop fans. And the competition started to notice. His FM reacted by adding a few hip hop songs to their playlist. Only the bigger hits and only at nighttime. Yeah. I know people that are not a part of Gen Z don't understand what is happening, but that is true. Like when we heard Biggie Give Me One More Chance, cause that was it, that was all you could hear. Trust me, you couldn't say that you rubbed her back without them bleeping that out. bleeped every innuendo out of the song. Damn, they talk about sucking on the radio. I can't believe it. It's amazing. Oh, so I was, I was on the Instagram the other day and I was like, oh God. All the girls are half naked. Should I take my clothes off? No, old lady, you too old to be taking your clothes off. But I was but I, like, damn, the Instagram, all the ladies are half naked or naked. Damn. And some of these girls don't have nothing. 
but a whole bunch of followers. Girl, if that's all you getting for showing your lips to the world, baby, maybe you ought to put your clothes back on. Kiss FM reacted by adding a few hip hop songs to their playlist, only the bigger hits and only at nighttime. And they were still playing Scared. For every one hip hop song they would add, we added five. This was happening and it was happening fast. And Flex was our leader. Even so, he was a far cry from the flex that fans would come to know. He hated talking on the radio. He hated talking. Talk on air. Nope, he just wanted to play records. Because remember, he comes from the club scene. When you're at the club, the DJ don't be talking. Hey, be like, enjoy this joint. Doom, 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 doom. You want to know the intelligence or the characteristics of the person that's playing your music. That's what I feel. You know, you want to know that you can connect with your DJ. That's why us old people love, oh, 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 it's the Tom Joyner morning show. I used to love that shit. I used to love Steve Harvey too until I found out he was old trifling bed bug booking Talk bitch. on air. Nope. He just wanted to play records. Steve Smith had to force Flex to talk. I'd hear Steve make the point to flex all the time. You have to talk to the listeners. They need to know how you are. In fact, Steve put flex on a you must talk at these times schedule. Flex has hated that. He was so weirded out and nervous about it that he would just open the mic and talk to whoever was in the room with him. I mean... Let me find out that was the beginning. Did he start that? And when I think about it, y'all, when I think back at the in the 80s, listening to like The Quiet Storm and Donnie Simpson, Donnie Simpson didn't have anybody that he was talking to. He was just having conversations with us, the listener. Like my favorite duo was Russ Parr and Olivia Fox. Those two were my favorite. Now this goddamn Steve Harvey and this Strawberry Letter, she done got on my nerves. That soggy, what the hell you gonna tell everybody about their love life when your love life just fucked up? Surely. Flex hated that. He was so weirded out and nervous about it that he would just open the mic and talk to whoever was in the room with him. And lucky me, running his board, standing there every night. It became the norm to get thrown a, what's poppin' Ange? Or right Ange? Flex would just start talking to me. And that's how I first started to get comfortable on air. And to feel confident just being myself. This phase didn't last long for Flex because once he started getting a taste for talking on the air and seeing the reaction he would get in the streets, he got comfortable on the mic, quick. Who is y'all favorite uh, duo on the radio? I don't listen to the radio now. I don't know these new mother. There were no two ways about it. Flex was on fire. He had the tunnel rocking every Sunday night. It was the mecca of hip hop clubs. The go-to spot for fans, artists, hip hop label, execs, drug dealers, aspiring artists, everyone wanted to be at the tunnel. Remember y'all, I did the video um, from the dude Choke No Joke because he did a documentary on the tunnel. If you haven't taken a look at that, I think I'm gonna connect this to this video. The tunnel was a big thing. It was like our black hole in DC. He was a student of the game, so he understood the business. He understood how to market himself, and he was aggressive about it. He made the whole team these nothing but flavor Funk Master Flex black leather jackets with his logo all over them, and we wore them everywhere proudly. Bad Boy was forming and Puff was flooding the streets with his windbreaker Bad Boy jackets and the B.I.G. Mac cassettes with Craig Mack's flavor in your ear. Well, you do know that Craig Mack had one of the hottest remixes of the 90s. I mean, goddamn, it had 
LL Cool J, believe me, at one time he was that ninja. LL does mean ladies love Cool J. Craig Mack is his song, so he had to be there. Uh, who else was on there? Buster Rhymes, you know. Now we got some issues coming out about him. Uh, okay, I'm going to just leave that there and walk away. It was Biggie. You know, the greatest intro of all time. Niggas is mad. I get more butt than ashtray. Fuck a fair one. I want mine the fast way. Ski mask way. Ransom notes. What? What? Nigga, was that hip hop? Answer yes. At almost 23 years old, I lived at the station. I was there almost every night. Salam Remy, a gifted up and coming producer who would later produce everyone from the Fugees to Amy Winehouse was there all the time too. Salam wore many hats at that point. He helped flex with his records and monitored the other stations. Mina, what is them niggas doing over there? One night when I was working in the back office before running the boards for flex, someone mentioned that a tribe called Quest was coming up to the station. Oh, I love them, I said. I love Q-Tip. I wasn't trying to fan out or anything, but I was excited that they were coming, and I made sure that when they made their rounds at the office, I got a quick pick. I remember them being so cool and regular and everything that I'd hoped they'd be. Okay, pause. Girl, don't you know about that goddamn Q-Tip? After Tribe made the rounds and took about a hundred flicks. They made their way to the on-air studio to interview with Bugsy, who was on the air before Flex. DJ Fred Bugs was a radio pro and had been in the game for years at New York's WBLS, which was an adult urban station. He was a strong interviewer, and of course, I had to tune in. I was still working with the street team at the time, so I was in the station's prize closet packing up teas while I listened on a little portable radio. They talked about the new music they were working on and plans for the group. The interview was good and pretty standard. That is, until all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Bugsy says to Q-Tip on the air, you know that girl Angie in the back? I think she has a crush on you. 